Uh, as you can see, this is the butt end. This is where the uh, hinge wood was, where the tree was falling. And um, then it, they just cut all this taper out. And we're going to make a chair out of it. So let's get started. After I got the ends dressed up, then I was able to work on getting the bark off. I'm removing the bark here to save wear and tear on the sawmill blades. The bark always holds a lot of dirt and it holds also rocks occasionally from hauling them uh, from wherever they were on our property up to where the sawmill is. Really, once you get this started, once you get a blade underneath the bark, especially these have all been sitting on the ground for a little while, the bark comes right off, as you can see. I'll use the sawmill to meet up with this cut I just did with the chainsaw, and this will actually be the seat bottom where you're sitting on. What I'm going to try and do here is use a splitting wedge to uh, finish the cut all the way down. Hold it a little bit tighter this time. And I just make a couple rough marks. And this mark is a seat, and this mark is the one that I'm going to right there. Here, I just use the jack to get it the whole piece level. And you can see here, I'm just using regular bubble level. And then one of the off cuts that cut off yesterday, uh, I just put a couple wood screws in the end and then that'll hold it at a platform. Now I just have to adjust um, the piece so the saw throat will be able to accept it. 
and then we'll be on our way. Here I did four cuts and that left us with this tic-tac-toe pattern with the four corners being the legs for the chain. Now what I'm going to do is go around the bottom portion that is going to be the legs of the chair and once I get that accomplished make sure I'm gonna mark it all so when I'm taking material out I make sure that I'm not taking out one of the legs I'm gonna start off here with the battery operated chainsaw it's a little bit smaller easier for me to handle than my 462c so uh, so at some point I'm still gonna have to get the bigger saw out to get the cuts in the middle but we're gonna start off with this it's not very loud but I'm still gonna put ear protection in just because my ears are already not that great so my wife tells me I got one chunk out and four more to go. By leaving this on the sawmill, I can use the hold downs and it keeps the material stable. And then it has a nice working height and it's off the ground. We reached the limit with this DeWalt, so now we're going to have to move to the 462C to get this last chunk out. I uh, reached as far as I could from both sides with the 16 inch bar, and uh, you can see this one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to clean it up with the angle grinder and a sanding pad and just get all these rough spots where you could see the breakout was from where I cut the different pieces off. Um, and those two saw marks in the chair hopefully get water off the top of it when it's sitting on the deck because unfortunately in Oregon it's wet.
This is the finished product after touching it up with the angle grinder and moving it to the front porch with the tractor, of course. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> it was fun to make, and I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did, too. Well, with the sawmill and a couple chainsaws, turned an off cut from a log that went to the sawmill into a single piece chair. That's it for Trout Creek Woodworks. Thanks for joining. Living life outside.